Welcome back one and all to Trails of Cold Steel. I am the Dark Seraph. Last time, Milliam and Crow had joined our party, and we're on the tunnel screen again because Milliam and Crow are in are on the train with us, and that is a very nice detail. And Milliam is adorable looking out the window like that. Anyway, I have my theories on Crow being a bracer or maybe a Jaeger. Because earlier in the game, C, the leader of the terrorist organization, mentioned something known as the Scarecrow. And Crow is, his name happens to be, well, Crow. So, perhaps it's connected. Or maybe it's just a coincidence, I don't know. Uh, uh, buddy, there you go. He he was sitting on nothing. What am I? I don't remember what I'm doing. I think I was doing the busy work. Yeah, because I remember I was doing stuff with... Yeah, so let's go back to the... Whatever it's called, the dormitory, because I remember I was in the old schoolhouse. Let's enter the dorm. Welcome back, Master Bean. That's not necessary, Shannon. I want to get this game finished. I think I'm almost done with it. I want to get it finished so I can get back in the Devil May Cry 5. Hey there, Sharon. Call her Shannon. Her name is Sharon. I hope the sudden shower didn't catch you too unaware. No. Would you like me to fetch you a dry change of clothes? That's not necessary. Uh, I'll survive. Thanks to your warning this morning, I was able to avoid the worst of the downpour. I'm amazed you were able to tell a storm was coming that far in advance, though. <laughs> Chairman Arena takes a lot of business trips, so I'm used to keeping an eye on the weather. Never being caught unawares is just one of the maid's many responsibilities. You are certainly something else. I can't really picture any other maids holding themselves to such an unrealistic standard. Not to mention, she's clearly got some kind of angle with Sarah. Maybe she's one of the railway military police, or perhaps a bracer herself. I'll let you know when dinner is ready, so just wait in your room until then. I expect the meal will take a little longer to prepare than usual today. Oh? How come? Well, with two new residents in the dormitory, I thought I might make tonight's dinner a little fancier than usual. A welcoming feast of sorts for them. That's very kind of you. Really? That sounds like a great idea. I'm looking forward to it already. I got one of those controller grips for my main controller I use. It's quite... grippy. Anything I can help you with for it? Oh, could you? I'm actually short a few ingredients, so I was just about to step out to buy what I need. I'd be happy to run to the market for you then. It's still coming down out there. Might as well go back out while I'm still damp, right? Don't worry about me. I don't mind. You're a nice guy, Green. <laughs> well, if you insist. I'd be happy to take you up on your kind offer. Here's a list of everything I'd like you to buy. That should be exactly enough Mira to cover the expense. Oh, and it is July 3rd when I'm recording this, so happy America Day! That's gonna be well past by any by the time any of you see this, because I have recorded way too far in advance and I'm still recording! <laughs> there is something wrong with me. Alright, I'll be back soon then. <laughs> Take care out there. A 
Looks like the rain must have stopped while I was inside. It's gotten pretty dark out too. I'd better get back to the dorm. Oh, hello. And who oh. might you be? You wouldn't happen to be one of the Class 7 students from Thor's, would you? Out for a little late night shopping, are we? You could say that. But how did you know I'm from Class 7? <laughs> you're one of the favorite topics at our radio station, actually. Oh, you're the woman from the radio. There are plenty of people out there who want to know more about Thor's dashing guys and gals in red. Oh, you work at the radio station? Hold on. Your voice sounds so familiar. Oh, maybe you know me from the radio? Ahem. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. This summer's turning into a real scorcher, isn't it? Damn it, what's to your name? To beat the heat, we're going to be broadcasting tonight from a park here in Trista. <laughs> Ring any bells? Wait. Huh? Y you're Misty? From Aubin time? Misty. Bingo. You're a charming young woman. You must be quite the avid listener, recognizing my voice so easily. Glad to know I've got a faithful fan out there. Wow. I never figured I'd meet Misty herself, especially like this. <laughs> I always make sure to catch up in time. It helps me relax while I'm studying. <laughs> Thanks. But it sure is serendipitous, you know? Having a chance encounter like this, just after the rain's eased up. Yeah, that's kind of what serendipitous means. It just means it just... Well, that just happened kind of thing. It's, it's hard to explain what serendipitous means. I guess a chance. I guess it just unexpected chance. I don't know. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't mention this on tonight's show. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure that I really constitute a noteworthy topic for a radio broadcast. Also, Elisa might get kind of jealous. It's kind of weird. I only know her from Aben time, but she seems just as friendly face to face. Hmm. Is something the matter? You're staring at me so intently, I feel a little embarrassed. Um, well, forgive me if this sounds a little odd, but this isn't actually our first meeting, is it? If I'm not mistaken, we met once before, in a hotel in Heimdall. <laughs> wow, I can't believe it. What? I never figured anyone would actually catch on. No friggin' way! So you really are her. The Azure Diva herself. Vita Clotilde. Right you are once again. Honestly, even the people I work with at the radio station don't seem to have noticed, so I'm surprised you could tell. I didn't recognize her. That makes two of us. I almost didn't say anything because it just seemed too implausible. But if you don't mind me asking, how did a star like you end up working at Radio Trista? <laughs> It's just a little something I do for fun on the side. Gotta spice life up a bit, right? The best part is, the people at the Opera House in Heimdall have no idea I come here to do my show every week. So don't go telling anyone, okay? It'll be our secret. Uh, of course. I wouldn't dream of it. I'm amazed no one else has figured it out, though. It's not like you use a different voice when you're on the radio. Well, there's a little trick to it. <laughs> you're not the only one who was surprised, though. Huh? I had this feeling I'd seen you before, but I couldn't put my finger on where. But it's you, isn't it? What? Anyway, I have to get over to the studio now. Oh, and be sure to tune in to tonight's Aubin time. It'll be a fun one. Pro w wouldn't miss it. <laughs> and give my regards to those two, would you? Oh yeah, Machias and Elliot, they were fanboying over here. She over smells her. like... Lavender? Lavender is a scent that helps you relax. The fragrance really suits her. So Vita Clotilde herself has been hosting a radio show in Trista. Even if I told them, I don't think they'd believe me. Oh, welcome back. Oh, hey there, Emma. Did you just get back too? Yeah, I just returned a short while ago. Were you out shopping? 
Yeah, Sharon asked me to go out and pick up a few things for dinner, though I ended up taking a bit longer than I expected. Wait, do I smell lavender on you? This is perfume, isn't it? How did it get up to you? Oh, right. I guess I must have soaked up the scent too. She did get pretty close. That's the only thing I can think of. Um, Reen? I just sort of bumped into a nice lady, nothing to worry about. I can only hope the reason you ended up taking longer than expected isn't because you were... No, no, nothing whoa, like that. Whoa, 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 hold on. You've got the wrong idea, Emma. You jealous? I just happened to bump into someone I know while I was out, that's all. Nothing scandalous, nothing I'd be ashamed of. <laughs> I never said it was. Though you do seem strangely defensive for a man who has nothing to hide. Huh. I wonder what would happen if Elise and the other girls were to catch wind of this. Don't do that. I swear, I just ran into someone I know after I left the store. Nothing happened. You just like raking me over the coals, don't you? <laughs> Oh, Master Reen, I see you've returned. Were you able to get everything I asked for? S sure did. Let me bring it over. Lavender. Huh. No, that's impossible. She's... Picking up on something. Oh wow. A uh, terrorist, a Imperial Chronicle, a newspaper. Breaking news. Terrorist attack follow-up. A representative from the Imperial family has spoken regarding the aftermath of the terrorist attack which took place in Heimdall recently. The spokesman confirmed that Princess Alfin, who was placed in the greatest danger that day, has sustained no serious injuries and was able to return to school as per usual. Who are the Imperial Liberation Front? The recent terrorist attack placed both Princess and Princess Alfin in danger and resulted in Imperial Governor Regnitz sustaining injuries. Inter injuries! While it may seem that peace has returned to the streets of Heimdall, the culprits behind the unspeakable acts who call themselves the Imperial Liberation Front have yet to be apprehended. The elite force responsible for their capture, the RMP, insist that they are doing everything in their power to detain to find them. Thanks to those who helped, chaos might have reigned in Heimdall on that day of the attack, but it did not stop the number of people from doing their part to bring the situation under control. Each of these courageous souls has received a letter of thanks from the Imperial Government. Extra special thanks are due to the young students who took command to restore calm in Dreykel's Plaza and a group of civilians who succeeded in rescuing Princess Alfin from harm's way. These people have received particular appreciation for their deeds. Yeah, I, I don't feel like reading all so, that. The West Samaria Trade Conference is just over a week away now. Building that tall is exactly what you'd expect from an economic powerhouse like Crossbelt, too. <sighs> it's a big world out there. Smaller than you think. Still, we've got Milliam and Crow as classmates now. Would have seen that coming. Crow opened up to us right from the start. Though I guess that's just Crow for you. And Milliam's become way more attached to us than I thought she would, too. They were both able to form combat links with us right from day one. I had my concerns about how well they'd mesh with the class, but maybe I was worried for nothing after all. I got a practical exam in a field study coming up. I'm your host, up. Misty. It's August 18th and we're winding down a busy day here at 9pm. I'm here to give you all the cool you need to beat this summer heat. Hey, looks like I'm not too late to catch this week's oven time. Seems like those hot summer days keep coming with no end in sight, doesn't it? 
But even this heat can't stop the momentum behind the West Amuria Trade Conference being held in Crossbell later this month. Prince Oliver and Chancellor Osborne will be in attendance for this watershed moment in international business. <laughs> Personally, I'm more interested in the view from the top of that famous new skyscraper the talks are being held in. In some news closer to home, you all have probably noticed the summer showers we're getting here in Trista. The rain's let up for now, but it's managed to push that nasty nighttime humidity right off the charts. I don't mind uh, a good summer shower. It helps keep things cool. Just a couple weeks ago, while I was at work, we had a cool front blow in and bring in a storm. Made the next day at work quite pleasant with keeping the heat down, though the humidity did suck on all those conveyor lines. It's nights like these, I wish I could smuggle an ice cold beer into the studio. <laughs> Yeah, seriously, I work in a warehouse. Uh, humidity isn't very good for conveyor belts or conveyor lines in general. And the director is chilling over there, drink in hand, mocking me. But you know what? <laughs> Forget that guy. Anyway, for all you students out there, your summer vacation's probably wrapping up, so I hope you made the most of it. Wait, I forgot that summer vacation at the military academy has already come and gone. Whoops. Still, it's never too late to do something bold that'll keep your memories of this summer burning bright. Hmm, and what about you, Miss Misty? You're probably asking yourselves. Well, you might want to sit down for this one. Because fate had a romantic rendezvous in store for yours truly just on the way to the studio today. A tryst with a young man in a park after sunset. Droplets of rain clinging to the grass. I'll treasure the memory forever. Or I would, if I hadn't just made it up on the spot. Chalk it up to a dreamer's poetic license, I guess. Still, maybe one day I'll feel the thrilling rush of a summer love. Gotta keep the fire burning. Wait, is she talking about when I ran into her earlier tonight? She's got quite the playful personality. Though somehow that doesn't come as too much of a surprise. <laughs> It's kind of weird thinking that I just met her on the street a couple hours ago. Anyway, I have to get over to the studio now. Oh, and be sure to tune in to tonight's Aubin time. It'll be a fun one. Promise. W wouldn't miss it. <laughs> and give my regards to those two, would you? Those two? I didn't really think about it right then, but who was she talking about? Probably Machias and Elia since they were fangasming over her. The Nature Park. Up in Keldic. Gideon. Huh. Ah. So you've arrived. Good to see you, boss. Oh. You're awfully early. Those two. Well met, Comrade V. Comrade S. I see that you've finished all your preparations as well. Smooth as silk. Although you're the one who'll be taking center stage in our next operation without a doubt. Who'd have thought you'd volunteer to go pound the pavement and crossbell? The Red Constellation are gonna be there. I still think I'm the prime choice for this one. Ooh, Jaeger Group. I disagree. As I can no longer rely on the power of the flute, it makes the most sense for me to go. Especially when you consider the very real possibility that we may have to accept a necessary sacrifice for the greater good. You're gonna light it. You're gonna... Ooh. That is the best way for us to achieve what we desire. You're serious? Ugh. You really are too morose for your own good. <laughs> I could say the same of both of you. Jeez. Why else would you have willingly plunged yourselves into a struggle like this to begin with? <laughs> I suppose you're right. <laughs> you got us there. I see you've all gathered. C. Comrade C. Who is this guy? Fashionably late, but worth the wait. That makes it a full house. I appreciate your gathering, comrades. The wheels have been set in motion. There is no place for hesitation, no time for looking back. We seek only results. I couldn't agree more. No objections here, either. 
It goes without saying. That said, I will ask you what you want. Comrade G, are you certain this is the path you would walk? <laughs> My heart itself beats with the ideals of the Liberation Front. If my life should see its end in Crossbell, so be it. That tyrant must be stopped from creating the vile dystopia he seeks. Dear though the cost may be. If through our efforts we or anyone anywhere succeeds in that aim, we will have our victory. They truly believe in what they're doing. Very well. May the goddess, or perhaps powers less fair, attend you. When this is over and our victory won, let us toast our success together in the Imperial Capital. Indeed. He's disguised as a guard. Farewell. He doesn't know how to express how he feels, but I understand. He's willing to lay down Losing his life. Losing your place in the world for doing what's right, and throwing yourself into the eye of the storm, it ain't something I could do. Different paths brought each of us here, but the road you travel now is the same. Let us depart, Comrade S, Comrade V. We each have our own part to play in what is to come. Of course. Just leave it to us. I'm going for off for just about 20 minutes. Okay. Hopefully, I actually get to get to go into some actual gameplay because all these cut these cutscenes, I don't dislike them, but they're this is some heavy shit. Not to mention, it'd be a pretty boring episode if it was just cutscenes. I know one of my episodes was just a train ride. So, I'm sorry about that one, but otherwise if I didn't, it would have been just a really friggin' long episode of nothing. Practical Exam, August. Alright, it's time for this month's thrilling Practical Exam. Is everyone ready? Ready as I'm going to be. Anytime. Being a first year again has been no sweat up till now, but I guess if my luck's run out of combat training, and I can't even skip out since they won't let me graduate without it. You do want to actually finish school someday, right? You spend more time asleep than awake, so you could at least put some effort into the practical exams. <laughs> right, right, I know. This is the part where we get to fight those things look like that look like Lammy, right? Can't wait to jump in. Hey, can we start yet? Can we, please? Would you at least make a token effort to rein your hyperactive outbursts? <laughs> it's amazing how much it's adding two new classmates can shake things up. I guess I could let you all fight the new combat shell. But since we've got two new challengers this month, have we try something different? I wonder what strange idea she's concocted today. A good instructor's gotta keep guessing. And by now, you should be prepared for anything. So, Reen, Crow, Milliam. Yes, instructor. Gotcha. Right here. You're the first team. What? The rest of you will be divided into two groups. An all-girl team and an all-boys team. Emma's team will be team. Emma's team will be class president. Maki's team is vice president. Green's team is team. Whatever. Each team will face off against each other in a series of mock battles. Interesting. Uh, quite an interesting split. Wait a minute. Hmm. Okay. Okay.
Okay, I'm... Um, although the part where a certain someone always draws the short star remains unremarkably consistent. Thank you, Elisa. What do you mean? I guess you would be oblivious to the new one, since you're on the new one. Huh, I wonder which poor sucker keeps getting stuck on the hard luck teams. Crow, you're not as oblivious as Million. I like the spunk. Well then, let's get down to business. To defeat the Huns, shall we? The first battle will be between whatever and Team Vice President. Alright, assume the positions and take it like a man, everyone. <laughs> Sorry, Machius. This is nothing personal, although I am going to enjoy this. Well, there's nothing really here to change. You're adorable! Hold on. Oh, you just have most of your stuff. Oh my god. No, 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 no. Hit the wrong button. I'm guessing the winner is going to fight Team President. Yeah, seriously, in the field, Usus's weapon looks far more like a broadsword than a saber. But in image, it looks like a saber. Yeah, that's the whole idea. It ain't personal, Machias, or anyone, or just guys, it ain't personal in general. Stay on guard and don't get saying. cocky! <laughs> no one is knocked out during battle. Evade and counter an enemy attack. Yes, sir! Let's fuck him up! Leave it to me. Let's see. Let's oh, go this for is a wild card. Ash. Oh! My turn. Okay. All right, let's do this. Gotcha. Yeah, huh. yes. gotcha. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. There. Go. Okay, you're going to, have to get your guard back up. Second form. Damn. <laughs> Leave it to me. Huh? My turn. <laughs> Listen to my song of feeling. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're not gonna have that. Time to bring the hammer down. Well, that's that. Let's get going. Excellent work, Milliam. That's enough. 
The match goes to team whatever. <laughs> the three of you fought pretty well together. We did it. Not bad. You guys didn't stand a chance. Thank you, Milliam. Don't get so full of yourself. You're one to talk, you sis. <laughs> Come on now. The three of you certainly don't pull your punches. Hey, you got more than a few good hits in yourself. Whoa, whoa. Don't start breaking out into cold drinks yet. There's plenty more action in store. Next up, Team Whatever versus Team Class President. We will bring after... We'll begin after a five minute break. Wait, we have to... We have to do two in a row. Fine by me! Oh boy, we got ourselves a real slave driver here. I mean... Emma, or not Emma, Laura definitely wants a chance to duel Reen. I'm gonna pair with Crow this time. Is that to say that Laura and Fee are gonna be the biggest threats on the front lines? I'm guessing those two are gonna come out swinging, with Elisa and Emma covering them from the rear. Yeah, probably. That would be the best thing to do. Especially since they're your long-range support, and Emma serves as a mage, a white mage well, healer shall we type begin? Heal. No one has knocked out during the battle. Cancel and go. art. All right, let's do this! Okay. You bet! My turn! Here goes! Alright! Freeze! <laughs> Get it? Personal. Leave it to me. Yes, sir. I was careless. My turn. There. Yeah. My turn. Eat My turn. There. Sit down. No. Leave it to me. Go. Yes, sir. All right. Ah, what's this for fun? Let's use a wild card. Oh, this is a good one. Dash. Wasn't strong enough. <laughs> Handsome and strong. I'm the total package. If you say so. That's enough. And it looks like the victory is for the stalwart team, whatever. Not bad. Not bad at all. Can't believe we lost. And fell just short of victory. You all fought admirably. Thank you, Laura. You are holding a claymore with one hand. I'm impressed with that. What a shame. It was a close one, though. No, it really wasn't. Wow, these class seven gals 
would just straight up, would just straight take you out before they even go out for a night on the town, huh? <laughs> well done, Millennium. Yeah, seriously. I'm pretty sure Elisa would rather sooner put an arrow in your forehead than go on a date with you, Crow. You too, Emma. I'd make Team Whatever go for on a third round, but there's no one else to fight, so I guess they get some rest. We'll review your performance later, but in the meantime, we've got Class President and Team Vice President going head-to-head. -head. Both teams, step forward. Do I get to control one, or is this just something I watch? Or it doesn't happen at all, it just happens off camera. Okay, whatever. That works. Damn, my audio's clean. I like that. I got a good setup here. Well, looks like that wraps it up. No, sir, I'm looking at the audio track. There is no ambient noise on the audio track. It's just a solid line. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> it looks... It was certainly a good fight, but... <laughs> Who would have thought that they'd taken an advantage of such a tiny opening like that to overwhelm us? That's Laura and Fee for you. I imagine that where combat is concerned, they would they would handedly best most of the second years. To swing a sword is one thing, but we were relying on Elisa and Emma to keep up the pressure. Yep, wouldn't have been nearly as effective without them. I'm glad you think so. Still, it's pretty safe that everyone fought pretty well. And this funny feeling that Reen's team would come out on top, though. Winning both of your matches with a new team is pretty impressive. I feel like I was riding on Crow and Milliam's efforts, though. Don't sell yourself short. You're pretty strong. And you're tougher than you look, too. Uh... Reen's weapon is a Tashi. That sword's not about strength. It's about speed and precision. I see your practical exams are as unconventional as ever. Instructor... was it Reinhardt? Nineheart. I know, that was close. Oh! I was under the impression that having back-to-back -back battles with uneven odds was a par for the course in actual warfare. That's a good point! And don't you think, again, learning to fight effectively against cunning opponents with team tactics is important for any soldier? That's certainly true. So what brings you in here? Please tell me this isn't part of the... We have to fight both of our instructors at once? Of course not. It's just that, like last month's field study in the capital, your upcoming field study is a bit unusual. Instructor Neidhart has been involved in making the arrangements, which is why I asked him to come. What do you mean by unusual? That sounds a bit ominous. Well... We just about wrapped things up anyway, so let's move on to announcing your next field study locations. Lagram, Reen, Laura, Emma, Eusis, Gaius, and Milian are going to Lagram. Elisa, Fee, Machius, Elliot, and Crow are going to the URI Special Economic Zone. Yes, that actually said that right. It is URI, because the J acts as a Y in the Germanic language, and this game is extremely German. After two days, reassemble at the designated location. Lagram is Laura's hometown, right? Hey, I get to learn more about Laura. It is. It's a lakeside town in the south of the Cruzenton province, blanketed by a thick fog for much of the year. 
As a castle town dating back to the Middle Ages, it's more than its fair of share of local legends and tall tales. Sounds historical. Yeah. And Laura is getting to go. Maybe I'll get Emma's S-Craft there. Yeah, that sounds interesting. I like Millium. She's adorable. Yeah. What are you what are y'all getting at? After completing your assigned tasks in your respective areas, you'll be boarding a train bound for the rendezvous point. That point is a notable military installation in the southeast of the Empire, Garaliah Fortress. That's the giant base on the border facing the Republic. So after we finished our regular field study, where we whisked away to a major military facility, it's a part of your field study. I'll be joining you there to serve as your military liaison for the duration of your visit. Naturally, you'll be given a series of assignments in specific to that location. That sounds like fun. I very much doubt that's the intent. Sounds like I'm gonna put be put through the ringer on my first field study. Something wrong? Don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah, don't, 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 don't sweat it, Nightheart. Unlike a certain other instructor whose name I, we shan't mention. It's Sarah Valstein! I mean, we have a bracer and a military corporal facing off. Basically, we have a soldier and a soldier of fortune. Toa. Here's a little something from the academy. The gladiator belt. You are such a sweet child. Wow, that must have been tough. Day of the field study. I'm going to have to end this episode here because I've been going for 43 minutes. 43 minutes of listening to my totally not annoying voice. No, seriously, I get agitated editing my videos because I have to listen to myself talk. It's weird hearing your own voice in a recording. It really is. <sighs> oh, get up. Right. We're heading out on our field study today. I don't need to get up just yet, but I guess it wouldn't hurt. Get your skinny ass up, Reen. Don't oversleep. Or I could just give in and go back to sleep. I'm still feeling kind of beat after training last night. Huh? Milliam. <laughs> wakey, wakey! Come on, Reen, it's time to rise and shine! We're gonna miss the train! And people are launching fireworks. Happy 3rd of July when I'm recording this. Stop that! That's not very ladylike. <gasps> right in the gut. I can't believe it! My very first class trip! We're gonna have the best time! How much money do I get to spend on sweets and stuff? Uh, however much money you have to spend on that. I don't give you money. Oh, oh! Do bananas count as snacks? Yes, N totally. No, no they don't! 
What do you got against bananas, Schwarzer? Just, just get off me, please. I like her. Ah, there you are. Good morning, Reen. <laughs> Seems you had quite the rude awakening this morning. Yeah, Coffee only wishes it was that effective. She must have really been looking forward to this trip. <laughs> it certainly seems so. She holds her own in class, to be sure. But at times like these, she seems like any other kid her age. I'm looking forward to finally getting the chance to visit Laura's hometown. I've heard that Lagram is known for both its many legends and for the mist that hangs over the town for much of the year. I'm pretty sure the two are connected somehow. <laughs> I don't know which stories you've heard, but most of them have been exaggerated in the retelling over time. It certainly doesn't lack for scenic beauty, though. I was hoping I'd have the opportunity to invite you to see it. Though I wish Elisa, Fee, and the others in Group B could have come with us. <laughs> Me too. I hope they enjoy their trip. Sorry to keep you waiting. Y uses. Good heavens. Ugh, can someone do something about this child? She's out of control. <laughs> <laughs> okay, looks like everybody's here. Let's go, go, go! You are something else, Milliam. Oh, great. and Gaius are with me too. You have everything I want you to have. And you need frickin' everything back. Oh, I still have another one to open on you. Yeah, I'll probably be doing that off camera. Do some prep work off camera, and I will meet you guys at the said i'm gonna end this one here thank you all for watching join me next time on trails of cold steel as i may as i make my way to legram but until then i am the dark seraph signing off i am gonna do some prep work off camera because that's boring pointless and tedious and it's something you really don't care about to see but until then i am the dark seraph signing off